Hi there everyone. Welcome to another YouTube by Huckleberries. Today we're going to focus on some of our, a, a new ruler by So Kind of Wonderful, but we're going to go over some of the older So Kind of Wonderful patterns and rulers. So the initial one, which some of you might be familiar with, was the quick curve ruler. And you can see there's the large curve on the back and the markings on that. And it went with patterns such as Metro Twist, we have Metro Rings, uh, Chic Sisters, Chic, well, a few of the Chic ones. They all used this large one. Then they came out with the Quick Curve Mini. Same thing, the smaller curve on the back. Now this is brown paper that comes off of these rulers too. And this strawberry pattern, the Mod Strawberries, is the Mini Quick Curve. Our Christmas ones that you may have seen, the uh, posh Holly and Posh Santa were done with this ruler as well. And then they even came out with combo patterns, which is beautiful owls. And if you take a look, the small owls use the quick curve mini and the large ones use the regular quick curve. So you can get multiple out of this pattern. Okay, then they also had the square up rulers that came with, and they were we had a customer who said she loves the just the ruler itself for a square ruler. So that was great for us to know as well. So there's the 10 inch, the eight inch, and the six inch. And they have extra markings on these that will go along with their patterns in their blocks. So that's what made them very useful. So you weren't using arrows like you have to on other rulers. You actually have the markings on their squares for their patterns. So the new one, some of you, oh, and they also have, sorry, these are their long, uh, or their, their long arm quilting rulers because they are a quarter inch thick, but all Bernina's we can use these, which is great. Um, the low shank ones um, aren't able to use these rulers because they're too thick. But if you've got a Bernina and a number 72, these rulers will work. There's two rulers in a pack. I can't show you, you can kind of see where they split. So you get an inside curve on this one and the outside curve that matches it on that one. And there's multiple lines that allow you to line them up on your blocks. And the same thing with this, oh, I can see the bending at the top there. The curve is on the outside here and on the inside of this one. And so these will match with the quick curve patterns. This will match with the mini quick curve patterns for your ruler quilting, which are awesome too. So today's ruler, there is the Wonder Curve Ruler, and they've added a lot more details to these rulers. And if you can see here, we have, this is the pattern that is included with the ruler, and I will be going over this one today. It's Wonder Flutters, so your cute butterflies. We have Plant Life that was done up by Carol in the spring, and that's the cacti. The new one is the Starry Nights one, and that's one we're all wanting to do. And Carol has hers underway. We have Cool Cars, Happy Together, and oh, Curvy Bow Tie. So those are the patterns we have right now, and I know this is their newer one, so they are coming out with more and more patterns. Okay, so with this pattern, here's what you're getting with the ruler. And you're getting the sheet, oops, there's your pattern there. And then the rest is on the back. So it's nice and colored and it was really easy to follow the ruler placement on your block that coordinates with your cuts. So it was um, all there for me, but they do have there on their website. So kind of wonderful. If you go there, you can find, they've got videos where they show you the cutting and the piecing of these. I'm not gonna show you the actual piecing, um, the curved uh, sewing together. I'm gonna go through the cutting and what the blocks will look up and how to use the ruler, okay? So I do have a quilt I'm gonna make out of these ones and I'm gonna put, instead, this one has five blocks in it. I'm putting 20 in a quilt and I'm going to arrange them a little differently and I'm not sure if you can see this, but your main block is here with four blocks that create that. There is a background here and a background here to fill that in. So once you get this initial block, you can actually add to all four sides and have them floating away from each other and also create, uh, put them on point and have them set differently. So 
that's what I'll be playing with when I do the quilt that would go with it. So these are the two blocks that are the two shapes that you need. And actually, this is called Shimmer A, this is Shimmer B, and the reason I'm positioning them like this is eventually you're using two Shimmer Bs around a Shimmer A. That's how you get one block formed, but all of the same cuts. So for your Shimmer A cuts, you're using four and a quarter inch squares. Now the pattern here, to get the four matching butterfly wings, you need four four and a quarter inch strips, which actually or, sorry, squares, which works great from a 10 inch square. So what I did draw up for you was, if you had a 10 inch square, so this is a 10 inch square, this is the piece of paper off the uh, layer cake, which works great. Your first cut I showed, so eight and a half inches is what you need, because that's four and a quarter twice. So you're cutting off one and a half inches that way. And then I turned it and I cut off so I have eight and a half inches this way. So there's another one and a half inches that gets cut off. And then you're cutting it in half twice at a four and a quarter inch mark to get one, two, three, four matching uh, squares. The other thing that you can do if you don't have layer cakes, because you don't need to work from them, just showing you this, pretend this is a full width strip you need to start with a four and a half inch one. And the reason four and a half inch, you're gonna cut two one inch by four and a half inch pieces first. That's what makes the body of the butterfly. And you're, you're exchanging them with other um, fabrics from the other cuts you make. And then I've got one, two, three, four, five, you're trimming it, sorry, to four and a quarter after that. So you're just taking a quarter inch off that strip and you're cutting eight four and a quarter inch. So this would give you two blocks like this from just a four and a half inch strip of fabric. Okay, so that might help you too when you're making decisions on what you would need for a quilt. So I'm gonna show you how to cut this. There's several rulers that you can use. I could use, which this actually worked out well. This is an eight and a half inch by 12 inch. I could put my eight and a half inch down and just cut away my one and a half inch and then turn it again and cut away that and then cut again at four and a quarter and four and a quarter. So I could use something that's eight and a half inches because that gives me my initial square. I could also take a square ruler. This is a 10 and a half inch square, so it's larger. If I'm needing eight and a half inches, so there's my eight and a half inch line right here. I could set it down and I could cut right around this, okay? Now, what I don't want to do, though, is because I want to keep these pieces, I actually like cutting right off the edge. So my, in this case, I might just slide this up and cut it off there. And I'm going to explain because I'm saving those for another project. And that is going to be um, a GE Designs project, but that gets set aside because there are one and a half inch um, quilt or strips for quilts that you can make easy quilts out of but you're not wasting any of this that way. I'm gonna actually show you just with the stripology ruler that if I put this on top and I match, so here's my zero line. I'm gonna scoot, push down along here and you can see it'll start to push against the fabric. There's my 10 inch, so it shows you there's my 10 inch square. I'm gonna cut it at eight and a half inches and I can actually work from this side, which is really nice. So there's my eight and a half. And you do need to take this away because you don't want to cut into it. Now I can take the rotating mat, which you've seen before, and do the same thing. I'm going to position that there. There's my 10 inch. There's my eight and a half. So I'm going to scoot that away so I can start here, go into the slot, and then turn my hand up. And holding here still straight through. Oops, I think I cut it wrong. I did. <laughs> <laughs> cut too much away. So if we were cutting the four and a quarter inch, eight and a half inches, which is now unfortunately eight, so I'm going to cut it. Here's a quarter inch, there's four inches. So that's four and a quarter. So I would only do that cut once and then turn it again one time because this is different than using a square ruler. Whoops, sorry. And I'm going to do the same thing this way. There's my quarter inch and there's my four 
and those of you watching are going to see I'm going to have two that are the right size but I've cut away too much because I was hurrying on this one you can see what I've done there it should be the same width as this so I'd have my squares which I've got two short ones and two that are okay done up those are my shimmer are going to be my shimmer a so when you take your squares you're going to take one and with your oops, wonder curve ruler this is where you can see lots of lines on them okay and the initial cut i'm going to cut i, I have to face i can't face I don't have to do it this way, but you're putting it underneath the ruler. Can you see my there line there? And you can actually see there's got several lines. So this one for this shape, for this cut, is going to be on that blue one. And then we're cutting away that curve. Now you will have a little bit more than this because your four and a quarter will extend past mine, but this still worked for the shape. So I've got the same shape as that. So that's what they're calling their shimmer A shape. Their shimmer B is going to be from five and three quarter inch squares. And we've got those here. So these are five and three quarter inches and you can stack several up. And what I like to do, can you see the line here? My trick for cutting them diagonally is to place the points on a line. Only time I use lines on mats is to line things up, not as a measurement, but as a and I can stack all of them. So you can do four layers with your 45 millimeter cutter. If I was using my 60 and a nice brush blade, I could do up to eight layers. So, and I can do it one of two ways. I could just pick up the ruler, which works out really well. And I'm just going to now line that up on the line and cut those in half. Like that and now we're going to trim this this is taking my five inch square on the ruler lining it up and then I'm just cutting off the end pieces like that and like that and then we're going to have the top facing away from us and we are going to put this one oops I've got to cut away like this so now we're using just the top corner of the blue solid line, which is a five inch line there, I believe. Okay, and I'm going to cut that curve out. And I do find, I'm gonna do it one more time to make sure I got all of it. You can hear it, there we go. Okay, and so when you're cutting with these, there's a fairly big gap you've got. So if you're just be consistent if you always hug closer to the inside always do that on all your cuts if you tend to go out to the outside edge always hug out there then they're going to match up really well when you're doing your sewing there is some forgiveness on these sewing these little bits i have a pin this is from all of my ruler the cutouts from all the sizes of the rulers and they are great for applique if i ever want to do that one day so they are being saved there. So now we have our shimmer B. So what you do with these is you always take your inside curve towards you on the bottom and then the, the curve coming out is on top. You start sewing at about a quarter inch down and you don't pin. Okay, you're not worrying about this and you're feeding this. What I find when I feed into the machine, can you see how that straightens out? just because it's got the curve. I feed that into the machine like that gently. And then this one, so I'm using my right hand on this, my left hand will be holding this, and it will be feeding it on top. And it's amazing how naturally it will come together. My trick though is a shorter, um, I use about a 2.0 for my stitch length, and I reduce my foot pressure so it feeds easier. And that's been a real game changer. And having smaller stitches, you're not having big stitches grabbing this and you can't, it, your curve gets away on you. So smaller stitches allows you to have more control on keeping these pieces together and 
feeding it straight and not jumping too far ahead on you. So hopefully that will help you out as well. So this is what it looks like once you've sewn it together. And they're all going to be a little different how much you've got here and here. Not to worry about that, okay? Then you're going to take your trimmer again. And you're taking this time this curve marked on here. You can see why their marks are great. You're not having to mark anything else. Now, when I place this on here, and this is where you're going to see my sewing is never perfect. You see the curve here? It's not sitting on it exactly. So what I do is I know the five is about middle way, midway point here. If I cut here, I'm missing out on part of that. So I'm going to scoot it down. So I've got to make sure I'm cutting the fabric and slide it over. And I'm turning it to have them even here and here. Okay, so once I like that, then I take, and they work out, not to worry. I've had all of mine different, and you can see the runner turned out okay. And I'm gonna cut it. And then that you discard. So now we're down to what they called oops, the AB shape. Because you've got, they call that the B, that's the A, and now they're together. So that's your AB. Then you're going to take that one that you've just cut and you're treating it just like that first one with another B. You're putting it down and the same sewing, you're starting at that top quarter inch down, feeding that all the way through, and then you will get your shape like that, your ABB shape, hence AB and your B. You're pressing, sorry, I didn't go over that. When you're first pressing this one, you're going to actually press it to A, and you can see that on the back. Spray starch, so I've got the flatter here, but I have I also have um, the best press at home too, and they work great. But you can spray it before you cut, or you might wanna do it actually uh, a couple of times, but that helps keep it flat. I do find when you iron at curves, I usually use the iron and I gently push the iron into that seam and the heat will soften the curve and then it will come down like that. And then you can, from the back, you can finish it off. And that's what they will show you in their videos on the So Kind of Wonderful site. When we add the second one on though, can you see that's, the, sorry, there's, whoops, there it is there. Cause I pressed towards that B piece. So once you've got that sewn on, I take, and I start actually here and I use my iron and the tip of the iron to kind of push out and push out and then I go like that and then I can iron it from behind and you can see that's not a square block but that's the magic of their rulers is the squaring up process afterwards so those get sewn together and then you're pressing it towards the B this time and it's all in the the instructions that go with the ruler which is great so now we need it to look like this this is where their rule, this ruler, because I've used the other rulers a lot, and I used to use arrows on my rulers um, because they didn't have registration marks. On this one, we actually have a blue dot here and a blue dot here. And this is great because this is where they're going to have you put those blue dots where, can you see where the point is here and where the point is there? That's what we do first. And then we're going to trim off one side. And you can see, that's why they've got the leeway of the fabric around all of this. So if you're starting to sew or end off in different places, that will correct it all. Now I've got that. Now I can take my mat and rotate it. And then I am squaring it up. Whoops, I thought I wasn't enough. Now I'm looking at my four and my four inch, and my dots should still line up at those two points. And then I'm going to trim that away. And the rotating mat is great for this because I would do the four matching blocks at one time. So I would do two sides and then I would turn my mat and do this part so it is more efficient. I can actually probably get up to eight of these blocks on this, the larger cutting mat. This is a 17 inch rotating mat. And there's my citrus block, done. So you do four of those for each block. So I've got this one, 
this is going to be for a quilt. So this was a layer cake from last year by, oh, what's her name now? Sorry, I've lost the name. It was uh, one of the ones I always use. Not Robin Pickens? Yes, Robin Pickens. Thank you. I just can't remember the name of the line. So these are the blocks. And so what you're doing is you're positioning them like this. Um, so these will get sewn together. Now you could leave them like that to get the flutter wonder, the butterfly one. Those, um, the one and a half inch strips that get cut, what I like to do is I tape one of them and cut it uh, down to an inch and I cut two four and a half inch pieces from that because that's what this is, one inch by four and a half. That gives me extra of these. Um, so I've got options in bodies. I can have more of one kind or less of one kind. And then you're just attaching a background to it. So these will match once they're all sewn. This will be the right length. And there's your block. Done up. So a nice quick one. And of course the squaring up, I do like these rulers and the fact that you square up and come down to a, an even measurement. Yeah, they're not gonna be perfect. It's not like a paper piece project, but they're not too bad. And I did quilt this one. You can see it better on the back. And I was able to do some ruler quilting with my new rulers from Natalia Bonner. And they were the ones called the mini four in one and the mini inside out. So these are the two rulers. And if you can see, one is the inside and outside curve which is just like this so kind of wonderful ones, but I'd already had these, I don't have the other ones, and I just pulled these out to try them, and the curve fit perfectly. So I was able to use these just to do these lines stemming out from the center and then back again that way. So it was a really quick, and I did do in the ditch, and these were so helpful, and then a quarter inch around it too, and like I said, the back is much more prominent with the quilting. So hope you got some ideas out of that. This block you can play with and come up with your own patterns as well, obviously. And you can see all the patterns I love. This is still one of my favorites that I've seen them come out with. And if you take a look at the back, you can do, you can choose however you, you don't have to do the whole quilt. You can just do a little portion and that would make a really sweet gift to start working on now for someone for next Christmas. So thanks everyone for joining us. Have a great day.